Why don't we move Bootsy to show eight? Uh, he's not going to do that. He doesn't want to be on the same show as James Blunt. He doesn't like to glamorize the use of marijuana. James Blunt, that's his real name. I know. I told Bootsy that, man, but he ain't buying it. Hey, guys. Look, I got a call from uh, the Wish Come True Foundation. I know those fuckers. They help kids with shitty diseases. They make their wishes come true, right? Yeah, I know who they are. I actually donated my pet donkey Pedro to him once. Always made me feel kind of sad that some kid would want to ride that beater donkey for his final wish. Turns out he didn't really want to ride old Pedro. He was an Apache Indian, and him and his family ate Pedro for his last meal. Look, there's this guy named Bronson, and he has liver -titis? What the fuck is liver -titis? It's like hepatitis, except it bypasses the hepa and goes straight for the liver. And he's a huge music fan, and he plays the drums, and he wants to meet someone famous. So I think he should come to the stage to meet David Grohl from the Foo Fighters. Yeah. That would boogie-woogie on his brain, wouldn't it? Yeah. This is Stevie Solis and welcome to Arbor Live. Tonight's show features the Canadian rock band Wide Mouth Mason, along with everybody's favorite. Oh, she's so sweet and beautiful. We love her. Everybody loves her. We have Leela Gilday. Also tonight, we feature a San Diego psychedelic blues band called Heavy Glow. So sit back, buckle up, and let's do this thing called Arbor Live. <laughs> Surpass with 
change that background, man. It looks too green and woodsy. You know, David Grohl's not gonna like it. Yeah, well, Dave Grohl can suck my ass. Yo, guys, guys, I got some bad news, bad news. Dave Grohl can't make it. His pet pig died. He had to fly home. Can't believe you had a pig. Those things eat their own shit and they fucking stink. He and that pet pig were tight, man. They used to walk together, cuddle together, make passionate love together, bathe together. Yeah, I heard the pig got out of the backyard and the neighbors found him and they turned him into bacon strips. Hmm, well, what are we gonna do? Cause we gotta get somebody real good. Especially this week, that Wish Come True kid is coming. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Well, hey, you know what we could do? We could call my sister's cousin's brother's father from Moose Factory. His name's Gilbert Chickenbeak, and he's a great drummer. That would be awesome. Yeah. Because everybody knows the best drummers come from Moose Factory. Yeah. Yeah. Songwriting for No Bad Days, we, we decided that we wanted to make a cohesive record. So we decided that there would be sort of avenues of what the band does that we would try and explore in full rather than making it this panoramic thing where we make a record that has, you know, the, the blues rock song and then the acoustic song and then the funk song. And we tried to make all those things be equal elements in all of the songs that we were doing. So there was a lot of listening to things as we were driving from gig to gig. On No Bad Days, it's the four minute guitar solo. There was a lot of room to stretch out. And the philosophy was that we were going to play live in the studio and capture it as a documentary instead of catching it in little bits, quantizing that all, playing over top of it, layering over top of it, and then correcting the pitch of everything. As We wanted it to be like, like recording in the 70s would have been. It went on the tape. It was live performances. It was a moment that we captured and that we could not only live with, but revel in the little imperfections of, instead of trying to Photoshop those out. If I'm actively listening to not just the music around me, but the world around me. There's, there's music and ideas for melodies and lyrics and rhythms everywhere. I can, I can, I'm at the point where I can sit down and if I decide to write a song, I can write one whether I'm inspired to or not. By, you can find ways to be inspired all over the place, but then what you do with those things and how you edit them and the arrangements and the shape that you choose for them to take and the, um, the, where you use repetition and where you use those different tools is something that I think you just learn over time by writing a lot of songs. It seemed like the easy way 
So I'm sitting with the lovely Leela Gilday. Emphasis on Gil, right? <laughs> That's right. So I got to tell you, you walk in the set, like last time, and all our boys are all giggly and all <laughs> goony. And it's like, I don't know, do you have this magic spell? Everywhere you go, you're like in a pillow of air. And like, <laughs> like Sean, our cameraman, he's all like, I thought he was going to start weeping. Oh, my God. What is it that you do to these people when you come in? <laughs> like last night, uh, we were at the awards, and you, uh, you were... You went queen of the universe, or what did you win? <laughs> what queen of the universe? Queen of the universe, right? Best female. How does somebody, how does somebody move away for a year, you like disappear, <laughs> uh, put a record out, come back and win the biggest award of the night? Uh, it was a female, female entertainer of the year. Yeah. What is your, what have you got going on? Who are you paying? Just because I was out of your sight doesn't mean that I wasn't still working my butt off. It's if true. you're out of my sight, it's there's true. something wrong, because okay. I was looking for you. <laughs> All right. It's my den and love magic, that's what it is. Is it? You got some kind of thing yeah, going on. Yeah, yeah, it's love medicine. And it's like, uh, <laughs> you go up last night and it's like, <gasps> you start weeping and it's like, I almost started weeping. It was so sensitive. Really? I, I looked around me and everybody else was getting choked up too. Oh my and gosh. I was like, <laughs> Magic <laughs> what the hell? She just put a spell on the whole sports arena. Well, I was really wanting to say how proud I was of, oh my God, I'm getting choked up again. See? <laughs> <laughs> like just, there was, you know, how proud I was of our people, that everybody was there. And, you know, it is a miracle that we survived as, as nations through residential school. And that's what I wanted to say. And that's why I started crying. Right, <laughs> so. right, right. But the best way, the way you did it. <laughs> I mean, I saw you last night. I was like, oh, right away. She walks up on cue. Lee, look at Ah. I just want to, <laughs> like one of those pauses, like, like you know, like a classic actress from the 50s. Oh, yeah. I would like to address everybody. You're so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so you're complimenting them as you're making them cry. You're sort of like, you, it's a magic gift you have. 
I guess so. Yeah, I think that was fantastic. Did you, do you, afterwards, I saw you backstage and you were like, you weren't even crying. So was that all acting? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did tease you last night. I teased you last night. Wow, you walked on cue. You dropped the waterworks cane. I did. You had the place in the palm of your hand. How do you do that? Imagine you, you were like, I was serious. It was real. It I, was. I, I, I knew it was real. I can't believe you fell for that. <laughs>
Jared Mullins from the band Heavy Glow, which is a San Diego sort of, what would you say, psychedelic blues band? Psychedelic, I, always, I just say rock band. It's a rock but it's band. it's psychedelic. No, but you guys really touch the, it's like if you were to take an early Cream record and mix it with Nirvana or something and so it has this blues thing, but it's kind of electrified. It's, it's kind of funny because the Black Keys now, their new stuff, is kind of sounding like what Heavy Glow is doing. Mm -hmm. Not the old Black Keys, which people used to call psychedelic blues maybe, right? Yeah. And now they've kind of changed their sound. They kind of, they kind of sound like Heavy Glow. You think they've been nick, nicking your sound? Uh, I think it definitely helped Black Keys to have a bass player come in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right? So um, our bass player is really, really good. We get compared to the band Free. Really? Uh, yeah. Um, this is like a recent development, but people talk about the band Free a lot. So. That's so weird. I would never think yeah. Free. And so now, is it uh, rock star time? Is it time to start touring the world? What, what, what's going on with you guys? Absolutely. Yeah, we'll, uh, we're going to be going to South by Southwest here pretty soon. Next, next couple months, and, and we'll be touring this year, so um, a little bit of all over the place, so. Do you find that, uh, I think that it's like a perfect time for your record now. Do you, mm -hmm. do you, what do you do when you're a young band right now, and people come to see you, and you're not on the radio? How does that work? Uh, word of mouth works really, really well. Um, you know, press reviews, things like that. Awesome. Well, if you're out there in Canada, you've got to go see Heavy Glow. These guys are like uh, one of my favorite new bands. They're really, really cool. And it's a, it's a sound that's like, um, it, they're, they're not posers. It's really, really good. And the, they're great musicians. And it's great to see young musicians actually really work on playing their instruments. And not playing their instruments like trying to be Steve Vai. Nothing wrong with Steve Vai. But you guys are just, you, it's like real. Like the way you'd go see Clapton or Jeff Beck or something. You guys are in there yeah. working it out. And I think that's awesome. So when you get a chance, check out Heavy Glow. Nick came down with food poisoning after eating days-old chicken salad from Kraft Services. For the rest of the program, the role of Bronson Pelche will be played by Bronson Pelche. Hey, having fun? No. All right. Can you keep a secret? Mm-hmm. I've been scamming those Make-A-Wish chumps for months. People think that I'm bald under here. And check this out. I get to ride the Spaceship One next month. What? Are you serious? I'm just f***ing with you. Lives and garner of the scorn, but in time it beats. 
became known to us that this was a big love. And nothing could have stopped their tides. Nothing could have stopped their rush. And she said, it's hard to see the future. And he said, it's harder still to forget the past. But right now we're standing on this mountain of change. Now that you're the entertainer of the year, I'm sure your price is going to triple. Hopefully. No. And, <laughs> and you, are you going to go tour now for the next eight months? Uh, yeah, I have a lot of things coming up in the new year, and um, I get a little bit of a break. I've been on the, I've been working pretty hard the last couple of months, so I got a tiny little break, and then um, picking it up again in February and uh, with the. National Aboriginal Achievement Awards, mm. and, uh, and then onwards and upwards. So. Do you do you do any international stuff as well? Or are you just all Indian country? Uh, mostly Indian country. Um, I I'm really big in Japan. Yeah, you just are. kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> We were working this, this last year at the Smithsonian on a, on a project about artists, native artists that had a lot of, lot to do with the, the shaping of pop music history. Yeah. And when I was dealing with Rita Coolidge, it, Rita Coolidge for some reason really reminds me of you. Oh. You have this sort of, uh, she had this real warmth of her voice and this real warmth of her, of her character that sort of you have like, yeah, a, a, real like a modern day Rita Coolidge. And, and I mean, there's no reason. She was hugely successful in the mainstream. And I, mean, yeah. I mean, you have a voice that's universally you know, it doesn't have to be just Indian country. Yeah, well, I feel like just, to be honest with you, I feel like this year I'm moving into my power and maybe it's just being in my mid-30s and like being more confident in myself and my music. Like I feel like I'm really, oh, I'm just loving it. I'm, I feel like I'm coming into my own. <laughs> That's true. I feel like there's this thing that you, well, but then again, staying in Indian country for someone like you might be fantastic because you inspire so many people, and, and that's pretty important too. A lot, you know, bringing the mainstream into the Indian is always great. Yeah. But also inspiring people that really need inspiration, you really provide that. So. Yeah. Well, I'm. I hope to do that. That's one of my goals. You are already doing it. Yeah. You're like, look at our boys there. All you inspire me. <laughs> 
different kind of inspiration. You're like, everybody, let's cry. <laughs> let's do this. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm so glad you're back here again, and I know everyone's excited to see you, and I'm, I'm always happy. excited to see you. I'm always happy to see you, too. I know. You always make me feel so special. She <laughs> makes me feel special, Sean, not you. <laughs> cameraman's in love with it. <laughs> All right. Leela Gilday. <laughs>
And I want to do something about it. I want you to know what it's like to have a true rock star night. So I decided to give you my two best girls to do with whatever you please. Oh, yeah. Nice, thank you. Go wait in the car, b****. Bronson, buddy. This is the tooth that I dug out of my grandfather's back after he was mauled by a grizzly bear, and I want you to have it. This thing? Yeah. It looks like a butt plug. Thanks. Look, I know my career is just starting and yours is ending, but I wanted you to have my royalties and flags of our fathers. And I have here my $5 treaty money. Now this makes sure that I'm an Indian, so you have that. And last but not least, my Arbor Live money. Let me get that. No, 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 no. It's fine, fine. Just leave that chump change for the bombs. Bronson, you are a great kid. And I gotta tell you, I feel really, really bad we weren't able to get Dave Grohl here for you. I know how much it means to you, buddy. <sighs> Whatever. Hey, maybe we can do it next year. <clears throat> Oops. Hey, hey, either way, we hope you have a heck of a time on that rocket ship ride. Yeah, you ride that thing all the way to Uranus. Yeah! You know what? You three guys are the biggest f***ing idiots I have ever met. Look, I'm not 15, I'm 24. And don't even f***ing have- Live in Titus. It's cool by you if it's 
Give the bass band some, come on. <laughs> <laughs> 